Hello and welcome to HeiserCast episode 9. I'm Dave here with Joanna and Lou. How's it going? Good. Going How on? are you? I'm good and ready to get into this episode. We are going to be talking about, what else? Disc golf. Um, oh, specifically, we're going to talk about a couple things involving kind of disc golf adjacent type things. We'll get right into the first one. I want to go through and each of us take a turn and explain to someone who's never heard of disc golf what disc golf is. I'm sure we've all had this conversation before. You say, hey, no, I can't. I'm, uh, I'm playing disc golf this weekend. And they say, what is disc golf? Right? So, Joanna, you want to start? <gasps> Okay. Sorry. Sure. Throw, throw any out, uh, out there. Okay. Don't so, know. disc golf. I say, okay, so you know regular golf, right? You use clubs and balls, right? Well, instead of that, we use frisbees. And there are all different types of frisbees, like there are different types of clubs that you would use in regular golf. And instead of aiming towards a hole, like in regular golf, we aim towards a basket. And we throw our disc into the basket, and that's how the hole ends. It's the same idea with fairways, obstacles, 18-hole courses. Same idea, and that's disc golf. Nice, short, pretty simple, distilled. pretty easy. Right? I, li I like what you do there. There's some things that stick out to me. <gasps> uh oh. Yeah. All right. Wait, are we gonna rip each other's? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you go first, and then we'll be critical. Oh, oh there we go. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. No, I'm gonna be critical first, so you know how to be critical towards me. Oh, okay. all right. All right, that's fair. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Lay it on me. I think the the hmm. the word frisbee is very com comfortable for people that don't play disc golf to hear frisbee. So using frisbee is really good. That just jumps over the whole, what's disc golf? What <laughs> The frisbee terminology definitely helps understand what you're doing. Well, you didn't hear the other side say, oh, what do you mean? I say, oh, there are different types of discs. Because you don't want to overwhelm so someone with too much information, sure. right? Like to say, oh, putter, mid-range, driver, controller, distance driver, blah, like, there's a lot Hold you could up. explain. Yeah, you got to like, start simple. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, using the buzzwords or ideas that people can latch on to. Okay, a frisbee. Okay, a fairway. A basket. All right, I can envision it. Okay. So, you're yeah. saying you shouldn't use frisbee or you should? No, you should. I think that's really good. That, oh, okay. oh, they were saying it was bad. Yeah, Ooh, me too. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that you use like the word. Because we said we're going to rip each other and then you just agreed like, with their frisbee. Oh. <laughs> well, this is the anticipation of me just being a jerk. <laughs> He That's on can't. you guys. He can't. He's just so but nice. Let, yeah, so I, I was right. Let me just, let me give my rebuttal uh, before <laughs> you guys, you know, tear into me. But no, it's nothing to be critical about. It, it, I think that's really good practice to not get into so many of the semantics and the flight characteristics and Hanheiser and Heiser. Imagine just running up to somebody, dish golf. Yeah, bro, you just, you just rip on like a, a, a Z plastic crank and you're just, you're gonna be pitted, bro. And people are just gonna be like, yeah, thanks, bye. <laughs> that means okay. nothing to me. No. Like, nothing. No, and so. What's your elevator pitch? Mm, well, <laughs> I have to, I'm a, I don't know if I'm the perfect person for speaking. I enunciate horribly. So when I tell people, I'm going to play disc golf, or I say disc golf, the most common response I get back is, you're going to a disco? <laughs> <laughs> and I just have to rethink my... You do have the shirt on for it, just saying. <laughs> no, th see, this is, this is, listen, I was in detention today. You're going to I was to running a disco. late, okay? I was in class, and I got sent to the office, so I didn't have time to change. So this is my school attire. Straight from second grade. Have you ever gone to a disco? Instead? No. Has it ever inspired you to go Who discos? dancing? Who discos? We can. We all could. Hmm. No. You, you were born in the 80s, right? Yeah, that doesn't mean I lived <laughs> it. I mean, my shirt survived. Yeah. <laughs> Next episode, small disco ball. Yeah. <laughs> small disco ball. Well, we'll, hang well we all love a good disco ball, but who cares about the disco? All right, just so the, the disco ball. they think you're going to a disco, but really you're going to play yeah. a so disco ball. Then yeah. what do you so, say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's like, the follow-up no. to that? And that's where I've failed a thousand times. It's like, I need to stop saying disc golf. And um, use frisbee use is a good alter alternative. But I, oh, if someone says, oh, are you frolfing? It hurts. I oh, hate that. that. Hurts. Hurts. I'm yes. like, no. You know enough to reference it, but you don't know enough to keep up with the times, man. <laughs> well, you know, you just did change their names to so you froff. Did you see that? Oh, April Fools. April yeah, Fools. Yeah. yeah. Everybody saw that. That Sorry. was good. Go ahead. Did you not see that? Oh. I've survived a many a good April Fools. 
<laughs> my favorite disc off topic, so far off topic. Someone's got to reel me in in a second. But best April Fools I ever seen was when they were trying to say that Paul Macbeth reinvested all his shares to become part owner of Enova. And there was photos of him like at a board meeting with like a chart behind him and he's like pointing and everybody's like, this is great for Paul. This is awesome. I'm like, you, you, it's very believable. You kidding, right? <laughs> and oh yeah. my so gosh. the cash out of the bag, but that, that could have been a good one for a day if they had the ability to even just pull it off. Well, I mean, I'm sure they got some people. Well, they got me for They a, got you. Know, you. They got yeah. me to click on the headline. They got, well. I clicked click. on the headline and I think that means they got you. <laughs> right? That could if, be true. Yeah. That's all they're trying to do is get you to get click those on clicks. It, so does frolfing bother you? It does. I yeah, definitely I hate, don't frolf. I hate frolfing. I, frolf wasn't my thing. I was never a part of the frolf movement. <laughs> I don't frolf with my friends. I throw discs and I play disc golf. But my elevator pitch. I'm reeling myself back in on this one. So uh, telling people I play disc golf or someone saying what's disc golf, I say it's the game of golf, throwing frisbees. And it has its own course. It's not like a perfectly trimmed and manicured fairway. This is golf off-roading. You are in the woods, over the hills, to grandmother's house you go. It's, it's, it's going to use open elements and wooded elements. And you find yourself incorporating this game into your life because it's everywhere. So you can travel and trip and break up your travels with this game. So that's how I pitch the game, that it's it's accessible and it's adventurous. Golf off-roading. Yes, I've, I've said that I like for a while. That. That's really cool. This is like golf off-roading. Because that's, I think, my favorite part, the fact that it's a beautiful nature walk through yeah. the woods. It's essentially a hike and you get to play a game. Happen to throw some discs and shape beautiful shots around trees. And yeah, that's what makes it exciting to me. Open courses, yeah, okay, fine. There's in the woods, wow. That's yeah. what I think magical. Oh, yeah. There's so many players that will just tell you flat out more woods. Holly Finley is absolutely one of them. Bring it on. She's like, woods, woods, give me more woods. Don't be. She's not afraid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I love that attitude to find the challenge of the elements. The off-roading aspect is what I love most about the game. So if, the, if it's going to be open, I want I want steep hills. Yeah. That's mm. it. Good mix, I think. Yeah. So it's it, open and just. <clears throat> I keep it short and sweet when I have to explain it to somebody. Yeah. And eventually, will we become the people who are just like, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to know. No, because then we wouldn't be ambassadors for the sport. No, right. I know. That's not fun. We, we want to be, I want to be, uh, so building the high school courses. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's my, like, little, this is, <laughs> this isn't why, but this is, like, one of the things that I enjoy about it potentially one day, a future world champ champion could come from that high school on a course that I built, and that's, and that's cool. That's where they got that's, introduced to the sport. That is very cool. That's the the buzz with, you know, trying to reel people in, tell people about disc golf, because their exposure, you never know where they could go. And, right. you're, and you, you instantly become a part of that journey. Right, you're you plant the, the seed early. You end up, especially when you're trying to describe to someone what the game is, yeah. sometimes a, a course can pop up in a park. And the the people that would visit the park regularly don't know what it is. They're going to ask you. It's happened to a lot of disc golfers. And what do you say? And you just tell them, hey, 18 baskets here. We're playing golf. And uh, you're, you're throwing these Frisbees on hole one to this basket. And it's golf throughout the whole property. And they'll get it. They'll understand it. And then if they want to take the time to come back out, that's great. But when someone's sitting down at a personal level, maybe off the course, and you're in conversation and disc golf comes up, you definitely try to sell them more in terms of, you could be world champion, anybody can do it, you can just <laughs> practice hard enough, and you could be Paul or Ricky. Like, who? Yeah. <laughs> who? Who? My buddy Greg. Yeah. <laughs> you could be my buddy Greg? No. You, no one's Greg. beat, I'm not beating Greg. I'm, I Triple G. I, you have to hang out yeah. with Greg, yeah. Greg Barsby, everyone, in case you Barsby. Anyone. Personal friend of yours. I'm still trying to find out what I could beat Greg Barsby in. It's not disc golf, it's not billiards, and it's not Boxing? This... Bowling? Baseball? Basketball? You brought it up. Bingo? Bingo. You could probably beat him I'm in bingo. Gonna, I'm putting a challenge out to Greg Barsby. One-on-one -on -one bingo match. Coming to a bingo hall near you. Can I be the caller? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, 48. Call some good, would you? <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! Well, that's gonna be something uh, to see. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be great. What, what's your approach on? Because um, you've been playing a couple years now, and you you have a lot in disc golf that you're involved with. What? You, okay. So you interact with people on multiple levels with disc golf. Yeah. So honestly, How do you... the questions come up more usually when filming disc golf. They say, "Oh, what are you doing?" <laughs> so I think that gives you uh, gives me a little bit different of an opportunity to explain the kind of professionalism of the sport. There's a, a tournament going on, and then that usually leads to, oh, what is disc golf? What? So I try to keep that part short. It's golf with a Frisbee. Okay. And at the very minimum, people get that. Golf mm. with a Frisbee. If they have more questions, I answer them. But usually it's, it's golf with a Frisbee, and we're filming a professional tournament. And it's, you know, I explain whatever else is going on. Because if they're in this park, they know about the park, so I can kind of go into that a little bit to help them understand. And that's usually where I come into it from a, a filming perspective. I've definitely had, you know, the old lady walking down the the path and say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm playing, I'm playing disc golf. <laughs> Ma'am, oh. I have a great vantage point here to the bank across the street. I'm just scoping the place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that's Don't pretty fascinating. Don't be here next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, but like if someone happens upon and they really don't know what disc golf is and they happen upon, you know, a car to four, maybe a caddy, maybe a small gallery and a film crew. Yeah. yeah. Of course you're like, what is going on here? Like this suddenly looks really legitimate and I walk this park every day, but suddenly on this Saturday, right. it looks much different. What's happening? Sure. And Cause I think it's very easy to miss a disc golf course if you're not looking for it. Cause you have a T sign and maybe a paver right. as Who your T pad and then a basket far away. It's like, you wouldn't necessarily think they're related if you're if just you walking know. around. Sure. If you're like, oh, I know that picnic bench. I go here all the time. What? Right? What? I mean, I think what? it could be easy to miss. No, you're right. So newer newer people that don't know the sport, this comes up too. People say all types of silly things, what they thought the baskets were. Oh. Right? So how this about happened the, to me huh? in the back of my own there backyard. You go. Okay, you have people that know you <laughs> or converse with you or find out about the game and they they then like let out what they thought they were looking at. <gasps> I've had instances where we've walked up to our co uh, Rutgers college course and one of the the baskets had a bicycle chain to it. <laughs> Literally. I could see Wait, that. Hold I on, hold on. That. Before cool. we could come. It's locked to the ground. Listen, yep. they, they nose ended into a circle of a basket and locked it to the front tire. It started a trend. There was eight bikes chained to this thing before you knew it. Like it was a, a 360 bicycle docking station. That's awesome. Oh, that was terrible. Where did you where'd you park your your bike? Oh, over by uh, that parking Holy lot eight. <laughs> <laughs> parking post eight. Wait, that's There's, so. Funny. They're all over this campus. There's eighteen of them. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's just for our convenience. Wow, that's right. a bike rack. That's out so in the funny. middle of the field. You can't even ride your bike to it without uh, getting ooh, over the grass. Right. I've heard bird feeder. My neighbor in the backyard said, "Oh, did you get a new planter?" Like, kind of shaped like it could that, be, right? you could put plants in the bottom and like vines growing up the chains mm -hmm. and on the top. Like, honestly, it could be beautiful. Yeah. Like yeah. a little water feature on the top. It could be a fountain. Hanger. Clothes, Clothes hanger. hanger. Hanging things around. I, don't, I could oh, see yeah. it, I guess, like any of these, but. Interesting. Yeah, 1950. <laughs> who, who are you talking to, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> these old ladies on the course. <laughs> Out in the middle of a park near you, but there's. Listen, we love, we love Close hangers. That's no, that's right. really fascinating. Like, what does a basket is, look like? Is is huh. that what you're saying your neighbors may have asked you? Like your neighbors looking over the fence maybe? Oh, it, maybe. Yeah. I was saying it, I've seen it in a park, but it makes oh, more sense uh, like yeah, in somebody's oh, backyard. Oh, in a joking setting. I thought you had heard someone say a, a clothes hanger before. Oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah, I could see a clothes hanger for sure. Like those old ones, those big ones. Yeah. So... Hmm. To move on to <laughs> another similar doctor. Let topic. us know what you've heard because I, this is I funny wanna, to me. I want to. Uh, the thing that like I'm just like starting to get into now is <laughs> being on that side and not getting what someone's explaining to you in terms of what disc golf is. I still don't know what you're talking about, pal. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and not not grasping it. That could be terrible. Well, it's like anything. Like, what if? Calvin Heinberg started trying to explain to you, you know, 
engineering terms that you had no idea what he what he was talking about. It'd sure. be the same exact thing. Sure, if he explained it to you long enough, you'd get it. Yeah. But at this point, you totally. have no idea what he's talking about. I don't think it's the same thing. Yeah, if you get it, you get it. You don't, you don't. But disc golf is definitely, with some of the creative things you get back in terms of what a basket is, or people thought they were. Yeah. Imagine just feeling like so silly once you find out. <laughs> oh, oh. This is why there was a frisbee wedged in my tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pal, you shouldn't have parked there. Oh, man. Right next to a disc golf course. What are you doing? Yeah. Obviously. Um, but let's shift gears a little bit. Talk about, other than playing disc golf, what do you do off the course but related to disc golf. I just said at the beginning, disc golf adjacent activities, mm. right? So they're like, watching, there's- you, you can't let go of the game. Yeah. You're, you know, we're all so it's involved yeah. in it, you'd need to take a break from playing. We can still watch and be involved and think about it. So what are the actual things that, some of the things you guys do? I have, the course? I have a resume of stuff. Okay. It's, it's- Give us the, the short list. The short list. <laughs> I, I enjoy this. The podcast. This is something I've wanted to, to do for a very long time. Uh, I started filming with a friend, Christian, and uh, I didn't know this side, being like on the production side of things, could have been so pleasurable because there's a, a different type of reward. You could practice and play, and it's self rewarding. This is more selfless rewarding. You know that you're contributing something for someone to just pass the time, you know. Uh, maybe get good advice, maybe get bad advice. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's fun. It's fun. It's not throwing, and yet it's a platform to to still be creative in the sport somehow. So the media side of things and the production side of things has been fun to dabble in. I like disc dyeing. I haven't set up my new spot for that, so I'm on a little hiatus with my disc dying, and the game is just going leaps and bounds. I don't know if I can keep up anymore. <laughs> I might just start buying some of these really cool dice because I don't know how, yeah. they're, how they're getting them. I enjoy teaching. Um, and I, I, I think that's pretty much it. You know, some club work and sitting down to not play an event and, and run some things sometimes. That's okay. So outside of playing, those are some of the things I do. And uh, they're all great. And yeah. it's, it's totally, absolutely that. It's, I can't let go of the game. 24-7, yeah. disc golf yeah. every day, mm -hmm. disc golf life. That's that's what that's it is. That's it, disc life. We're always doing something, even if we're taking a break. From oh, sure. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I mean, I would a uh, thousand million, trillion, gazillion percent agree with you that this is super fun. And I think it has grown my own game in listening to perspectives and talking about things that, um, it just, I, th I think it just makes, well, I can just talk about myself. It, it, I think it makes me a better golfer and it makes me feel more informed and formulate real opinions and kind of look at things that maybe have been around for so long and potentially give a fresh perspective and say like, why is this like this? And I think the feedback that we've gotten too has been awesome in that we're not just like talking at ourselves. Like it, it really is interactive and people are speaking up and, and listening and I, I love it, and I think it's a great way to engage people in a way, you're right, that's not playing. Yeah. But, I mean, for me personally, um, I watch a ton of coverage, like, every night. <laughs> that's, like, it's just what I do, and I, I find it absolutely fascinating to watch people's games in open, in the woods, women, men, everybody. I just, I love watching the styles, dissecting it, thinking about my own, what can I emulate, what maybe won't translate for me. And then also physically, I I work out. And for me, that's, I mean, it's for my own mental and physical wellness, but it's for me to have stamina on the course and have the strength to, to carry the bag and to really try and control at least one factor yeah. when you play. And that's to have a good, you know, physical, I don't know, yeah, you way might... about you that you can control your game from start to finish and not lose any... Um, connectivity to your body. Yeah, you find a lot of joy in the things that you could do outside of playing to contribute to the the performance. Totally, that's that's part of your your exercise. Your and not even just like practicing throwing or doing field work. It's it's the other things. It's yeah, hydration and getting to bed and eating your vitamins and feeling good about right. being out there. That's important too. Yeah, important. like f figuring out what fuels your body the best for tournament days. Like, what do you bring for lunch? What should you eat the day before? How much should you drink the day before? Like, 
can you help your body out? And it, it's trial and error. Like, hello, it always yeah. is. But it's kind of cool to think about the other factors that can help your game elevate. Yeah. So all the coverage that you watch, I do have one question. Yes. And How often do you watch Heiser Media? <laughs> It's just not every day you're off this podcast. <laughs> oh no! It just has, kidding. No, it has nothing to do. There's so it has nothing to do with who, but what would be your favorite camera angle to see when you see someone lining up a pot or a drive? You just love seeing it that way. It's a cool angle. I will say there is. I love the form check slow mos. Okay, that checks and slow mo. It's very cool to me. I mean, because you know, you see the back angle of people throwing, you can see the follow flight, the, the whole thing. But when they come to the side, like especially on a drive, and like they take it slow, and you see their reach back and their step, and just where that power is, and it like when you see that in slow motion of the yeah. top level pros and exactly where their body is hitting, and where you see that whip coming from, and you see that slow transfer of weight, I think that's really fascinating because. That is something that every player has, mm -hmm. but people do look a little different, and it's very, very cool to see, especially height. Some of these disc golfers are so tall, yeah. and yeah. I find it interesting watching Emerson Keith. I'm like, okay, he throws far too, but he's like a foot shorter than like Calvin yeah. or Big Germ. Like, and it's interesting to watch that whip come out of a, a shorter person, but also going far. Like, I, so that to me is fascinating. Like, how can I? Because I'm, I don't know, probably similar, right? But how can I generate that amount of whip right. in my own body? But look at that mechanic. But yeah, look at the learn. taller people's mechanics. And you can critique and look at your own videos and kind of think, okay, is there a similar body motion here? Am I, am I properly locking in and generating from the right spot? So you, that's a great explanation of, you know, seeing the, the, the form. Yeah. That to you is like... Whenever you get to see a good angle or a slow mo of the tee shot, it's it's form. Then then that's that's the one. I think I'm. I don't know if I'm over the slow motion putt yet. I'm getting there maybe. I like it. I think I'm. I, I don't know. I, it's I think, very cinematic. It's and cinem I'm going it's, from maybe a, a. It's cinematic. Um, popular background but. i think i hope it's not overplayed i i think the slow motion could be a little less like hey it's outside the circle we're going to put it in slow motion but maybe more like uh it meant something stroke wise and it was a good putt I that think being paired could this be. year i noticed that jomez started doing stuff where they're just doing a replay, not a slow-mo replay. Okay. I don't know if it's to keep those videos shorter, but a great shot that they used to put in, you know, 10% speed. They're not, they're doing some slow matches, some slow -mess. but they're also doing just replay. Just a replay. And it's just to see the shot again, and, which and, I think works more f towards like every other sport. Right. They don't show a touchdown pass in, in slow, slow motion. motion. Maybe like the end. it's epic. Right. Like the cat. They and just that, show it again because you want to see it again. Again, just real, real quick, just I, let me see it again. I am never more frustrated than watching a football game and you see a dude get laid out and the fumble happens. And then they show this big old hit in slow motion. It looks like he barely like bumps into the guy. Yeah. It's like, no, I, I want to see like these Like in real time. Right. I want to see these two semi trucks collide. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see the, the whole chaos of it all. Yeah. So slow, I think the slow-mo is a little bit overdone. My favorite thing in coverage in terms of filming or angles, I do like the the quick replay. I think the, yeah. I just want to see it again. Like that just happened. I love seeing it happen in real time. I really like seeing the replay in live now. Ooh, yeah, don't yeah. even interrupt my coverage. Just take this and shrink it down and put it over there in the, the picture corner. Picture picture, yeah, that works great. The picture and picture is yeah, great. Yeah, that's a new addition, I think, this year to live coverage that they'll show a replay, which is cool. Yeah, that's the keeping that perspective fresh is really good. It helps everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm really curious to hear from the man over here, like all the extra laundry list stuff that you do. Yeah, so, well, first to start the, the <laughs> my favorite shot, of course I, I like the slow mess, because like I said, it's just cinematic, and the slow mess, oh, yeah. it's not always called slow mess, it's just, <laughs> that's just Joe Mess, that's the just, slow mo shots. <laughs> um, super cinematic, it's always framed well, they use a 
different camera to shoot those shots, hoping they get those shots. Yeah. And just from being in the film industry, I just love watching them. Even if I didn't like disc golf, I would just love to watch those shots. Um, but probably my favorite shot is the drone shots. The drone. Not just the course, the course previews. A lot of us doing live drone shots of them playing. Or even, I think Joe Mez started doing whole previews from really high up editing some graphics into it to show you the fairway, the line that like a, a par four would hit. So the follow flight line. So there's a lot of, you know, the drone industry in general is a fairly new thing. So the applications of it are evolving oh, yeah. very quickly. Right. And I've seen over just a few seasons of them using them. It's just going above and beyond. So what it's at now is awesome. And where I can see it going, I just can't wait. Sure. So being behind the camera, yeah. what's your favorite thing to film? What do you like best? T-pad, catch cam? Um, so I'm typically T-cam, but I think catch cam is the most fun. I filmed a lot of different sports and catch cam is very similar to that. So if you're filming football, you're filming lacrosse, whatever, it's following the action as closely as you can to get that super close of the expression on the player's face, the disc, you know, landing and skipping towards the basket. I think that's just the best shot. Um, that is just mo the most fun to film. Mm. Um, I film T-cam because that's my job. But <laughs> if I could do anything, you know. <laughs> You'd oh, fly yeah. a drone around. I would fly right. a drone around and live do and do catch cam and T-cam and reaction cam all at once because that would just be awesome. Um, but no, I can't do all that, so. Oh, of course. But, but. Right, but those are that's those are my favorite types of shots to film myself. Cool. Mm. I like flying the drone through the woods too. It's hard. I, I could definitely get better at it, but it's fun. Okay. It's like kind of like a video game because you're you're looking at your little phone, and you got two controllers, and it's like, but you only have it's like playing a video game, but you have one life, and if you if you lose, it costs you two thousand dollars. <laughs> Wow. That, that's exactly yes. what the game is. So sometimes you go a little bit slower than you normally would. <laughs> that totally checks out. Yeah, so that that's that's a drone game. So when you see it on coverage on Heiser Media, appreciate it. Give that <laughs> video a like, all right? Um, I'm just trying to picture my kid trying to like ask me to buy this game. It costs $2,000, and if I die <laughs> once, the whole thing's ruined. What? <laughs> that's yeah, great. That's not very much. Like tough that. sell, man. Yeah. You got too much pressure. Do you? Do you take anything for that anxiety? <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> just smile yeah, and keep just filming. Smile and keep going. Keep going. So that was all my fault that we ended up here. That's all right. <laughs> but I think it was good to touch on because it's this girl loves watching coverage. Nobody watches more coverage than her. She tells There's me probably things. Probably more. No. 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 <laughs> the editors. <laughs> the yeah. editors of all the coverage. Yeah, those people for mm -hmm. sure. I do send you stuff. Yeah, it's like, like I, I'm, I'm like, like how did I miss time. this? How did I miss that? You're telling me things that have unraveled in rounds, and I know I've watched it, but I didn't see it. Like, how is this? <laughs> so you definitely are up on your coverage. So I couldn't help but to just be a little curious. And yeah. I think the perspective of what you're watching is, is uh, there's like favorites and like not so favorites. I'm tired of seeing putts from behind the player. <laughs> like I'm, you know, I'm tired of watching people's putts go in while my putts go out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a coverage. It's just yeah. in real life. <laughs> it's just in real life. And then I find the, I find the actual like putting perspective of like viewing that putt back at that player too. A nice one it's pleasurable to watch because you don't normally get to stand in view of the player to see that it's a unique perspective it's a unique camera yeah. operator it's gets to unique... stand in the line of view yes. of a player okay well have you ever filmed yourself putting from behind the basket like you're here the basket's here and your camera's here oh not yourself. No. I don't think she meant hold the phone. Oh, not like a selfie putt? That was going to be tough. No, no. We I mean, like. Selfie putt. Did you see me post a selfie putt a couple weeks ago? No. Oh, how many tries did it take you? Once, because I was from oh. here to here to the basket. Oh, I just well, selfie. There oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. People hated it. It was, it was great. Go check it out. Okay. Um, but um, the reason I bring that up is because. I know there are tons of ways to fix your putt. I know we've, uh, we talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but something for me that was really interesting is when I miss your camera, when you watch it back, you're like, yup, my hand was not right there. Sure. It ended here and my disc went here. And so to only see the basket and like your arm is really interesting. It's like arm sound or no sound. Yeah. And it's just a different angle of feedback that 
The pros Spoiler. get all the time. Right. Like they can watch themselves from many angles right. on coverage. And like, if you think about how you practice and okay, I know angles that I like to see from pros. How can I get that angle of my own shot and try and break down my form and see where that is? It's it's really quite an interesting case study, I guess. Of so far, a little tripod. That's all you need. I like it. Yeah. Easy. Of course, film like you putting. know, film your own putting mechanics. But I mean, once you have that like consistent. But somehow, your body and the aim is like not adding up. It, it could be cons- very interesting. You can think it's consistent. There's benefits but you don't to notice. the camera angles and yeah, just something different to do. It's yeah. That's why I thought I would ask about the camera angles because I know that there's aspects to your game that you work on, you enjoy to understand better, and me too. And I find myself just when I watch coverage, I'm, I'm interested in, in more angles than others. Yeah. So I was wondering. Yeah. And I think that's that's going to be for everybody. Yeah. So now you know what angles of coverage and stuff like that that we like. Comment down below what types of shots you've seen. Maybe some of them have been on Heiser Media. So tell us if it's some of those or what we could do better. Um, but that's going to be it for episode 9 of HeiserCast. Thank you so much for watching. We have an Instagram at HeiserCast. Mm-hmm. Um, Joanna runs that and does great things. Mentioned it on the, another episode. Lou likes to talk about sports that start with the letter B. Um, <laughs> True. True. So you can go check that one out and all of our new fun things. Bocce um, ball. <laughs> Bocce Ooh, ball. that wasn't in there. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Bocce. There's so many sports to start with B, it's crazy. Um, but thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next hole.